All right, g'day. It's Matt. <laughs> I don't know why I laugh at myself. Anyway, um, I'm going to do paper of the week, and it's like a really evil one. That's why I keep giggling. It's strange. Um, but I'm a strange guy like that. So here's the paper. That's what it looks like. Um, I'm sure we do something to make it available for you and easier to read. But um, basically, this paper was from the JAMA, Internal Medicine, which is the Journal of American Medical Association or some shit like that. Um, very important journal. It's like one of the best in the world. The title of the paper is Sugar Industry and Coronary Heart Disease Research, a Historical Analysis of Internal Industry Documents. So I don't know if you know, but apparently, legally, you can keep secrets for a period of time. Even though it's killing people and destroying the world and all that sort of stuff, it's fine to keep those secrets. In fact, it's encouraged. And then after a period of time, they have to publish and let the secrets out and let everyone know all the horrible lies and shit they did to us and how it's almost killed us all. What's amazing is this public... It's not the most recent paper. I know we try to get ones more recent. This one was published in 2016. Um, and the reason why it spins me out is it's a published conspiracy fact and it never made the news. I mean, on the news, we're talking about sugar tax. We talk about, you know, do, which diet works. What do we do? Do we do Atkins? Do we do this and that? That's what we're talking about on the news. This sort of stuff doesn't make the news. Now, let me tell you what it says. And you can, everyone can get this paper. This is a free full text paper that you can have access to. And it's really cool to have some evidence to show that us weird quacks that are suspicious of conflicts of interest and bias and that sort of stuff every once in a while we can show that we have good reason for being suspicious so basically what this paper states i'm not going to go through all the details because you can read it but um what it actually does is it releases the in-depth details of the conversations the meeting minutes the conspiracies the instructions that the um, sugar industry the sugar research foundation gave to the scientists at places like harvard university and everything like that on how to trick us all Okay, so where it started was in 1940s and 50s, they started realizing that too much refined sugar, at that time it was mainly sucrose, table sugar, which I get from sugar cane or uh, sugar beet. Um, they found table sugar was contributing to heart disease. Now, what's interesting about it, that at that time they found that the sugar that was found in fruits and vegetables, cereals and grains, no problem. So what they decided was the research showed that no more than 10% of your calories should come from refined sugar. So added sugar, like in your coffee and on your cereal and in your foods and soft drinks and things like that. So 10% of your daily calories, no more of that should come from this um, empty calories in the find of refined sugar. The rest should come from carbohydrate foods, okay? That are functional foods. Um, and at that time, the fat industry, uh, the recommendations for fat was up to 40% of your calories can come from fats, okay? Now, what happened is they got a new marketing manager in at the Sugar Research Foundation. He said, let's create a scientific body. And what we'll do, we create this thing called the Sugar Research Foundation. They invested um, $500 into pay off one scientist to lie and $1,000 to pay off a dietitian to lie. And what that did is it created enough paper to induce government policy to actually tell the world fat causes heart disease and sugar is fine, even table sugar. And what they worked out is that we can make a shitload of money for our investors and our farmers and the sugar associates because it's a business and their competitive business was the fat. Okay, so what they did is they set out on a campaign to discredit fat and say that fat and cholesterol causes heart disease and sugar has nothing to do with it. And what they did is they published all of their scientific journals, not in scientific journals, they did it in the newspaper um, to the public. So they did all of their scientific advertising to the public. They invested the equivalent in today's dollars of $5.3 million. So by the way, they paid the scientists the equivalent of $6,000. They paid $5.3 million to educate policymakers, which are basically politicians with no scientific background, educate policymakers on how fat causes heart disease by basically saying, hey, look inside this artery, it's got fat in it. Look in this food, there's fat. There's no sugar inside this artery. Sugar can't go inside the artery. Fat goes in the artery. Therefore, fat is evil, sugar's good. 
And the policymakers make sense to me. I have no idea about science. And with a $5.3 million investment into the propaganda, they managed to get the policy. And what their whole campaign was, was to stimulate the business associated with the profit of selling sugar by taking 20% of the allocated calories in the food pyramid off the fat to give to sugar. Because what they've tried to say, and successfully tricked everyone into believing, is that it is okay to have up to 25% of your daily calories coming from added table sugar. For example, soft drinks, um, uh, sugar on your cereal, sugar in your coffee and all that sort of crap. So what ended up happening is the food pyramid was made back in the 50s and 60s. We're still going through that now. Now, once this conflict of interest and everything was discovered in the 80s, so 20 years later, after the food pyramids have been done, JAMA and the New England Journal of Medicine who published all these idiots' original reports basically i shouldn't say idiots they're geniuses they've actually tricked the whole world to into thinking that it's okay to have empty calories in the form of sugar it's not going to do any harm um and that good healthy oils is going to kill you and it's successfully done it to this day everyone still believes to be healthy you avoid fat and eat clean carbs and you'll be fine which is not the case it used to be 40 percent calories from fat and that was shown to be healthy the research now is showing about 30 percent calories from fat is about ideal but to have 30% of your calories coming from refined table sugar as an acceptable healthy diet is what these guys implemented in the 60s. Now, we still have exactly the same food pyramids. They still have all the food pyramids dominated by this. We're still avoiding fat. And the policymakers still believe this bullshit conspiracy. We've had all of this sort of stuff published. And I want you to get this paper to have on hand because it lists off the exact people how much they got paid when they got paid what they said and these lies are still going around today now imagine this we're discussing sugar taxes and that sort of stuff on the news at the moment the government is telling us to eat 60 percent of our calories from carbs and 30 percent of our total calories it's okay to come from refined sugars they're still quoting from this bullshit research from the 50s and 60s now, the same people telling us to eat a whole heap of sugar are saying they're going to tax us. So we're going to tax that sugar. So eat it, and then we're going to tax you. Guess what? More money for the farmers. Bullshit. More money for these wankers. This is bullshit. So this is a published conspiracy fact, and we're going to share the link to you, and you can have this and just tell them to put that in a pipe and smoke it. Um, actually, that's the tobacco industry. We'll do that next. These guys are worse. All right. All right. <laughs>